would you rather have loads and loads and loads and loads and loads of fruit that you could pick all year round or would you rather just have a couple of vegetables that you eat seasonally but you can only have one or the other oh jez why do you start with these such difficult what? questions i mean this is a really fundamental life question so hang mm. on let me get the parameters of this right so yeah. i can have unlimited Yes. fresh yes fr fruit, fruit yes. from my all own plants yes. all year round yes or seasonal vegetables but only a few it's glutts or gluttony <laughs> yeah it really <laughs> is isn't it it's like the ultimate yeah. um well i don't know because my instinct is to say fruit because the prospect of being able to pick a ripe peach straight off yeah. a tree and eat it or yellow autumn raspberries or something like that it seems oh, incredible yeah, yellow raspberries but maybe that only seems incredible because they're so rare whereas by the time i'm on my fourth kilo of perfectly ripe peaches i might be going oh lord give me a broad bean in may well, so okay. I don't know. What would you pick? Maybe this is an easier one. Would you rather okay. an elbow on your head <laughs> or, or three ears on your hand? Oh, well, three ears on my hand, because would they be right. functioning ears? See how much easier it is now. That would be useful because <laughs> then you could kind of hear around corners, couldn't you? Yeah, I should have led with that one. <laughs> you should have led with that one. Ask me the easy questions. What about you? Oh, fruit. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Fruit oh. and a cupboard full of emodium. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and a big freezer. Come to a caveat. <laughs> this is true. Um, okay, on that um, in that respect, jam or marmalade, if you could only have one. Well, now this is difficult because I've always been a jam boy. Mm. Uh, my dad liked marmalade. <laughs> but... And then there's another extra twist in this. This is like a helix answer of a question, a double helix. Um, Why am I not surprised? Then I went to marmalade because I found the most amazing Sicilian marmalade. In fact, I think it was a Dalesford marmalade in a flip top thing with oh, like Sicilian oranges or something. It's that, good. Yeah, yeah, it might well amazing, have been. Yeah. Big chunky. And then at your lovely book launch, uh, topic of the conversation was your amazing damson and rosemary jam. Mm. which lasted three days in our house that's good gone yeah i'm pleased about that and i we had it on scones fresh fruit scones i baked um with uh, and i had some double cream so i whipped the life out of it and so it was lovely and fluffy but thick yes and and had that with your damson and rosemary jam and it was stunning let me tell you i'm really pleased recipe please so i've converted you back from back to marmalade jam. to mm. yeah the problem is, I think marmalade is often a bit like jams, though. It's often just sugar mm. with a bit of fruit flavour in. Mm. Uh, and what I like is a good, chunky, rustic, wholesome. So it feels less like I'm being attacked by sugar because yeah. I don't eat much sugar. So I'm really sensitive to it. But but I want flavour. I want depth. I want something exciting and, you know, yummy. Mm. Mm, wise choice. Well, I'm glad we've solved the world's ills before we've even really got started on this week's episode. Um, what, what's happening with the jams and, and rosemary jam? Is that sort of, is that going to be in the shop? Are you? Uh, it's is, all is gone. gone or... No, oh. it's all mm. gone. Is there a no. recipe in the new book from the veg patch? A sort of there, like a little curveball? Uh, there isn't actually, but maybe I I'd quite like to do a it. volume two and maybe that would have... From the fruit a... patch? Oh, well, if we've got our year round mythical fruit patch, then right. yeah. Loving that. Work. Um, hello. How are you anyway? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> should we get on with it? <laughs> I think we probably should. <laughs> Sorry, dear listener. That's yeah. my fault. I'm, all right. I'm sleepy today, Kathy. Mm. I'm a little tired. Because uh, you've been partying or because you've been weeding late into the night? Or... Yeah. <laughs> Slug hunting. Slug um, hunting. Everyone's uh, favourite clandestine adventures <laughs> after midnight. What do you do with your slugs? Do you pick them and give them to the birds or what, what do you do with them? Let I, them die, chase them away? I, 
uh, I, there's going to be letters about this. <laughs> um, I squish them. Oh, do you? Oh, Gleefully. wow. Yeah. Gle- <laughs> you don't just squish them. There's a sadistic joy, joy in it. it. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> With my what do you do? Laugh. Yeah. <laughs> I just shoo them away. I try preventative. So because we've got the pizza oven here Mm. and in the winter, obviously I have the fire in the house. Mm. I keep the ash and sprinkle ash around the hostas and stuff like that to try and, you know, keep them away. So, yeah. And then, although I have noticed there's a couple of hostas, despite the fact that they're well established, they're being a bit eaten this year, but it's different though, isn't it? Every year it's different pests and different things pop up and different things attack you and don't attack you have you be... tried eggshells for your slugs that works quite well i have i don't get through enough eggshells oh um so and historically marley and my other dog ate the eggshells oh uh, really i'd That's crack an egg give them the eggshell or give them the whole egg um so Ooh. but but so what do you, but surely you have to oh i suppose instead of you putting them on the compost heap you crush them all up and then just go and sprinkle them in the garden yeah exactly oh, that. okay fine and the slugs go oh sharp yeah. And, Ow. Yeah. Ow. yeah. <laughs> and tend not to uh tend not to visit quite so much. But you do you have what... to get through a lot of eggs. But I do get through a lot of eggs. Yeah, and maybe I should start getting through more eggs because they are good for you. They're good for you. Um, but I have noticed that the copper thing just does not work. No, I know. This nonsense, and you can buy all sorts in the garden centres, the copper strips and all that malarkey, and I just I it's never ever worked. I've no. always got in short of somehow clearing the whole patch of um worm of slugs and then being able to put like a copper wall trump style wall around the whole thing (laughs) i can't see it working yeah no uh, that's quite cute though i quite like that idea of framing the top of it would be sort of offset the top of all your veg patches with the little wrap around problem is copper's not cheap is it so no it's true um, and as we know nice. not very effective so no yeah so entirely pointless all can rounds. that idea yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, just, you just get it <laughs> what have you been up to in the garden then my love well again a little bit like last week you know just an awful lot of cutting back and fighting mm. like fighting my way through you know there's areas of the garden like the jewel garden looked beautiful at the start of the season and we had all of that rain and it beat all of the tall stems of the um uh corn flowers and the um wall flowers they're all sort of crushed and a bit all over the place mm. the helenium i don't know what's happened to those helenium does not exist in my garden this year despite there are tons of them a bit that's slow. a shame i wonder yeah. what happened uh, it will come i would imagine yeah. but then also i had these beautiful scabious huge wild scabious i was telling you about and they've all mm. you know kind of been thrown over so uh. i feel a little bit like indiana jones i get my little hurry hurry and i trundle in <laughs> like that and i've got a little hat and I sing da, 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 as I go in and I've got like some, you know, secateurs and all that kind of jazz. Um, I've been sharpening stuff as well, sharpening secateurs and stuff like that. Um, oh, now tell me about that. Do you use a whetstone? A <laughs> whet, whetstone? Whetstone. I do. Yeah, I'm an old fashioned kind of boy. So yeah. Drop it I've... in some water. Yeah, so you drop it in some water and then do you use the rough side and then the smoother side afterwards? I don't have a rough side and a smooth side. I just, mine is a, uh, one side is flat and one side is curved, is concave. No, is Mm. convex. Mm. Um, And uh, yeah, I leave it in there for sort of 20 minutes to soak. I don't know what that does, but the instructions told me to do it. So I'm quite- Same, same. I'm good with instructions. Uh, (laughs) And then I, you know, I use the, rounded edge on the curved bit and the flat edge on the other one so interesting yeah. i'm going to send you mine because i'm rubbish at sharpening i have to say though mine were quite pricey i thought i got fed up of buying secateurs regularly and i thought this is nuts really what i should do is save up a bit buy a really good pair that i could have potentially for the rest of my life uh, until you leave them in some undergrowth um yep. uh but i think looking at them yesterday i've bitten into something a little bit too chunky and big and the the two blades are a little bit far apart now, uh, which is why they're not cutting very well. So I might yeah. have to send them off to the little man to <laughs> fix them for me. Why is it always a little man who does that sort of <laughs> stuff? But it is, isn't it? I don't know. I don't know. It's sort of like they're from a time warp and you really need them. It's the same with chimney sweeps, I think, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Um, so that's what yeah. I've been up to, sort of just pottering. But it's glorious, isn't nice. it? I love, I love a potter. And how's how's things over there with your it's, new sexy kitchen and your new veg patch? It's lovely. It's very it? pretty at the moment. Like you, it's quite jungleous. Yes, <laughs> uh, as it always is at this time of year. Uh, but it's looking good. It's looking very colourful. I've got quite a lot of edible flowers at the moment, which I'm nice. really enjoying in the patch. Nice. I used to be quite old fashioned about growing and would just plant the um, the vegetables. But that was more when the patch was in an allotment or not at home. Whereas now it's at home, I found myself much more interested in the way it looks. And so I planted, yeah, thinking they'd just be nice in the patch, I planted yes. some calendula and obviously sweet peas which I love yep. and uh some nasturtiums and then I left a few things to grow to seed go to seed like the rocket yes. and things like that and now I've so got that lots, you get the flower so that you get the flower exactly yes. and lots more herbs that flower so hyssop and yes. thyme I know we've spoken about thyme a lot before and I thought at first this would just be pretty in the veg patch, but I found myself really using them a lot more in my cooking as well. Yes. Because yeah. they just look so beautiful and they add loads of flavour, particularly the they're often quite peppery, like rocket flowers are quite peppery. Yes. Nasturtiums yeah. will take your head off peppery yeah, yeah. wise. And so they bring another flavour to things as well, which is just lovely. It's great fun. Well, I suppose instead of what you can do, you can play with that a bit, you can experiment. So if something you're thinking about adding mustard in because of the earthy flavour, you can really pull back on the mustard and chop up some flowers yeah. a little bit or add some broken up flowers. Yeah, I should and, say, mm. just to, sorry, just I do want to say this before we get too carried away because it's really relevant to what you've just said. Um, I think a lot of people get stuck in that bind of this is stuff for the veg patch, this is stuff for a cottage border, this is stuff for this. And I traditionally was that because there, were, there was so much space here that I went to create these little separate areas. I was very mm. much, you know, and all the books say, you know, classically, this is what you grow in here. This is what goes here. And you're right. There's nothing wrong with chucking whatever you want in a border. If it's a purple flower and you want purple flowers in there, whether it's a herb, a vegetable, a fruit, a, a perennial or whatever, then chuck it in. It doesn't matter, does it? And I totally agree. And I think that's a really interesting transition that you found that, you know, the, the, the garden, I, th I think outside spaces are are two things. They are either visually joyful uh, and it's all about aesthetic or they are um, functional. But there's no reason why they can't be both of those things. Mm. And what often happens is that we get into this trap in our mind where we feel that it almost becomes a chore because the the garden needs to look beautiful because that's what you've done in your head you said oh, i'm going to create this border or this set of pots because i want them to look visually beautiful and you've got in your in your mind this sort of idea of what visually beautiful looks like and now yeah. you've got this sort of subtle pressure all the time that when it rains or when they grow a bit wild you've got this sort of to-do list because you've got to do that to make it look neat and tidy again because that's what you intended to do yeah and the same thing with with produce is that you know you've got that subtle pressure all the time that you've got to re sow you've got to be in time for this you missed that the weather's not right for this mm -hmm. and actually stripping it right back what it should be about the cornerstone of all of these things kathy is joy isn't that's it? exactly what it's i was about to say about i totally agree being happy and getting out of it and so if it goes a little bit wild like i've been doing in the garden just leave it for a bit yeah. You never know, wild might look a little bit lovely. And you might think, well, actually, this is a bit wild up the top here. And that's quite nice. But I need something else to the for the bottom because it's all gone a bit leggy. Whereas if you cut it back, it would stay, you know, yeah. down about. But now you've created yeah. a different look. Um, and and so, also, and wild as well brings yes. you new opportunities as well. So, for example, the rocket, which went to seed quite quickly, sure. but it's still perfect. It's wild rocket, so it's peppery as hell anyway. So it's still yeah, perfectly yeah. pickable, <laughs> even once it's bolted. But then also suddenly you've got, oh, look, I've got some extra flowers and these yeah. are gorgeous and yeah. bright yellow, like lurid yellow. And they look really nice in the veg patch. And that's a good thing. And I've only realised that since we've had the veg patch here and at home rather than at friend's house. And also even more so now we've got a garden that is 
all about looking out onto the veg patch sure. and the and the rest of the, a kitchen that's all about looking out onto that. That's the next thing I'm going to do. So I've here I experimented with real classical gardens. Mm. And when I move, I think I'm going to create. I'm going to design some garden areas that are just about visualization mm. and and if potatoes are going to look great in that little pot there or space next to some other perennials or shrubs or herbs or whatever then that's what's going there yeah uh, and i'm just gonna go a little bit crazy and do what i want to do irrespective of what the books uh you know tell me to do because so you know, agree within and- that soil it's about joy isn't it and flower aside, um, the potato flower is a beautiful yes. flower, particularly the purple ones with the little yellow middles. They're gorgeous. But this is, um, I've never seen it before. So where I live, there's, it's 360 degrees arable. And the first year I moved in was oilseed rape all, all the way around, 360 degrees, as far as I could see. It was wow. just stunning. Um, not so wonderful if you've got a hay fever, but a bit of local uh, OSR honey and you're fine. Yeah. And then, of course, we've been through those crop rotations this year. There's potatoes as far as the eye can see. And they've just in the last week or so started flowering. And you're right. I've never noticed how lovely the little sort of almost sort of pinky mauvey flower with the little yeah. yellow center. Um, yeah. And talking of flowers, sorry, I sort of digress because mm. I just wanted to get that, you know, that, I know there's a lot so of people right. that, that, that listen and, and, you know, and struggle with what should a garden be. And, and we do get a bit bound up by historically yeah. what gardens are um yeah. so edible flowers mm. white borage of course i completely forgot about that when i spoke to arthur parkinson he reminded me i completely forgot white borage exists Beautiful yes edible flower. that's true and that's i don't true. i don't gr- i used to grow borage in the veg patch over the road uh but i'm cautious about putting it in in this garden because mm. it's not a huge garden and borage really takes over yeah. yeah but it does make a mean gin and tonic, a borage flower. Because have it's you noticed? Come back to gin always, and it does often come back to gin and tonics with me, doesn't it? I can't imagine. Have you got a lemon tree? No, I'm not very good at citrus. Have oh, you? Have you not? Uh, I had a lemon and an orange tree, and they were doing really, really well. And all of a sudden, both of them decided, nah, we're not mm. all right anymore. And I don't know what it was, but they they both didn't do very well so I might try again now we've got a bigger glass kitchen which Mm. is a bit Mm, more useful for overwintering um but borage because it tastes a little bit of cucumber I think when you when you eat it yeah Yeah, it's really good in a Hendrix so rosemary flowers or some some rosemary doesn't I believe but um Mm. but rosemary can flower so that that's an edible flower too daisies can you eat a daisy Yes, you can. The petals of a daisy you can eat. Yep, that's I absolutely did fine. not know that. Fact yeah. of the day, listener. Um, so I don't know whatever white, what other, sorry, white flowers you can eat. <clears throat> but, you know, if you mm. wanted white on top of a cake or something like that, or then daisies, yeah. Yes, um, and obviously roses, assuming they're not sprayed roses. Can you eat the actual, so all rose petals you can eat? Mm. I have no idea, I Kathy. Know. There you go. And they look and lavender. beautiful. Lavender, always lovely. There's Sweet peas, quite a lot, isn't there? Pea shoot, pea flowers. They're often white and beautiful. And then when things go to seed, like my amazingly, I've still got. Um, well, I re-sowed some radishes, uh, but they bolted fairly quickly, as they often do over the right. summer. But they have white flowers, and they're nice. Maybe not on a cake, but the thing I can't bear as a quick aside with edible flowers is um when people put flowers that aren't edible on wedding cakes it makes me crazy yeah whole point is that you know they're not they are beautiful but they also need to be edible as well I think like I saw there was something that's um poisonous I feel like it might be a peony and honestly the number of peonies you see on on wedding cakes take it away (laughs) Um, or was it hydrangea anyway something like that what Big about no. jasmine can you eat jasmine flowers oh i don't know i'm gonna say you probably can given jasmine tea is made from well jasmine. see this is where i'm thinking is yeah. that maybe there's a link i don't know this and if if you're listening and you do know or even better because kathy and i are a big fan of the book 
just any book, not the book. Um, yeah. I, I'm just going to pick up my <laughs> the book. book is a concept. <laughs> yes, yes. Yes. <laughs> I love the idea of print on pages. Um, <laughs> bravo, whoever came up with that. Um, uh, I'm just wondering if, you know, if there is a book that shows you what flowers you can eat and what you can't, but whether there's a correlation, because I'm wondering whether, you know, could you eat, for example, oilseed rape flowers or vipers bugloss yeah. flowers or... Because honeybees yeah. pollinate those, right? So you could definitely eat oilseed rapes, just brassica, isn't it? Like, yes, but, yeah, uh, like but would rocket. it taste nice? No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, right. I sort of feel like we need to go right back to the beginning <laughs> of this conversation when you've just listed about 20 flowers that you technically but, can eat. <laughs> yes. Well, as I discovered when I picked some uh, chamomile flowers thinking they're a bit daisy like and they're very pretty and I obviously you can put them in tea but yes. I thought I wonder what they taste like yeah and? answer revolting oh you know when you've let chamomile tea sit for too long and it's really stewed hey, in the hang on a minute Our tannin ca isn't levels chamomile tea leaves not flowers no it's the flowers as well is it and the buds and stuff yeah okay fine carry on and <laughs> but you know that really yeah tannin rich acrid or, almost uh, oh acidic. my yeah god they're like the most stewed chamomile tea you've ever tasted oh, i no. do not recommend it i was really excited because i thought they'd go really work nicely in a salad yeah. but but no i would really anyway. love that w wouldn't that be a really nice thing to experiment mm. i mean not you know maybe with someone else <laughs> yes <laughs> the least favorite child what does yeah. that taste like yeah. <laughs> revolting anyway Good. talking of books i suppose mm. that's sort of a nice little segue really isn't it should we do book of the week <laughs> yeah i love it go on, you should go should. first this week i think ah okay so now oh it... this face you're gonna break the rules again aren't you <laughs> yeah. i can tell from the look on your face we're on zoom for those listening check out the youtube recording of this because you'll see this look on his face that I says <laughs> I'm going to break the rules, Kathy. I didn't even know there was a look, but OK. Um, so <laughs> it's not one book. It's sort of a series of books. Oh, OK. Um, I haven't got the whole series, though I would love the whole series. I'm just not entirely sure I would actually. I'm a bit efficient. I only like things in my life that I use. I'm not very right, good yeah. at just okay. for the sake of having them. So if uh, you're but... a friend of Jez and he stopped calling you back, that is what. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, not like that. Um, but, but it does annoy me a little bit when people buy you gifts and you think, well, that's a gift for the sake of buying me a gift. But it has mm. literally no use in my life whatsoever. Utterly weird. You know, just mm. I think, well, that's going in the pile of to be mm. re-gifted, isn't it? Mm. Um, or the Usually shop. ways of crushing garlic, aren't they? Those kinds <laughs> yeah. of gifts. <laughs> yes. Anyway. Um, so this is the river cottage handbook series uh river cottage handbook number two is preserves because when i first well because when i first uh moved in obviously i inherited a bit of an orchard and wanted more orchard and loved the idea of making preserves let me tell you now kathy that book i think has been flipped through um there are no dog ear corners which means i've not probably read it uh and i gave up very quickly on the idea of making preserves because i had no time uh, oh, it's a cracker, that one. I know that one well. That and it's um, it's a marvel. And it's really good technically as well. That one. This one here is just, look at that colour. Mm. Is that the this veg is, one? Yes. <clears throat> Handbook number four, veg patch. Yeah. Um, I suspect I probably won't need this anymore because, of course, we now have. It's been preceded by the, uh, oh, no, proceeded. Uh, by from the bench patch by Kathy Slack. <laughs> um, so uh, that does it's okay to have both because that one does a different job. And my copy of that is very well thumbed, particularly when I was first growing, because ah, it's quite okay. a small book, so you can take it up to the allotment with you. Exactly, and it's right. got lots of charts in it that explain yes, it right. what to sew when and what's in season when. And the recipes at the back are really good as well. I think that's a cracker that book. And there's if some going really... to buy Sorry, one on. how to grow book yes. that's that's it oh really i think yeah I, I flicked through it a bit um uh, but i didn't grow i didn't go into it sort of properly enough but it's one of those things it's funny you once you've got a handle on something you do tend to 
feel yeah. a bit more confident so you get on with it but yeah. all of these books I think when you're reminded that they exist you dip back into them because you pick up stuff all the time and you think oh gosh yeah I forgot about that or mm. oh okay yeah no I'm comfortable with the idea of growing veg what else could I grow or where are, you know what, what other varieties or something so they're always yeah. really useful to keep and then the only other one I've got of this series because I stopped collecting them again because I had chickens was uh, River Cottage Handbook number 11 chicken and eggs um, mm, I don't have that one for some reason it's called chicken and eggs not chicken. chickens and uh, yeah. chickens are very um uh social they're, they're not very good solitary creatures and this one again has got lots of dog ears so this is obviously me saying right I know nothing about keeping chickens Mark Diacono tell me how to keep a chicken um <laughs> just the one, <laughs> just the one <laughs> so I uh, found that very useful yeah very so good they are published by Bloomsbury mm -hmm. I don't know how many of them there are but I mean that's that's 11 that one but it's it's a lovely little thing can you imagine them all lined up like, the, like a little set I can I've got a fair few of them have um you? yeah and um the reason I was sniggering can't believe we've done this the reason I was sniggering slightly when you first uh suggested that when you first said what your series was was not because you've broken the rules but because <laughs> my book of the week oh <laughs> is the river cottage handbook number seven <laughs> which i don't have which quite, is the hedgerow like one <laughs> <laughs> i'll swap you for the chickens um i can't believe you've done that that's hilarious there's so many of them so um this one's hedgerow Lovely. there's a new one out um the outdoor cooking one's really good that Gil Ooh. Mella wrote. There's one that's just I out about it. fermenting by Rachel de Thample, which is brilliant. I think we need to find a sponsor because this is crippling me. What, buying all these books? Yeah. You're so Can right. We to be a publisher. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Could we just have some books? Um, oh. But my my one of my favourite ones is the Hedgerow one, which is by the god of foraging john wright and uh -huh. uber lovely person and it's really helpful because you know those sunday mornings when you go on a walk and you yeah. go what is that weed yeah. can you eat that what on earth is it and you come back and you go oh look it's no. deadly nightshade <laughs> yeah, yeah. it will kill you <laughs> which is usually how it happens with with foraging um and it's also useful to identify weeds in the veg patch so in my old patch i had a rash of deadly nightshade it's very helpful to know what you're dealing with yeah and then um so it talks about each of the weeds or Beautiful. things to forage in the hedgerow and explains whether they're edible or not and they are helpfully in edible species in the first half brilliant and then poisonous species in the second half i love that it's so hemlock, deadly nightshade. What's There's really... quite a lot, lot that would kill you in a hedgerow. I, d <laughs> I didn't ask. And depending on where the hedgerow is, that could be broken bottles. It could be a, yes. an aggressive homeless person. Um, <laughs> I grew a hedgerow, two hedgerow. Um, so in the corner of the garden, there's mm. this sort of shady area of the garden I wasn't sure what to do with. Yeah. And um, with some people that used to work with me here, we came up with a plan of a wild native English hedgerow in Lovely. the corner. So we planted, and there's all sorts of things coming out there now. It was only last year, I think, that we planted it. So, and it's just starting to come into its own. So there's this corner that was just going to be left, mainly for the birds, actually, and wildlife. Yeah. That was the point, you know, for the berries and the undergrowth and stuff. And But you've got this beautiful, big, deep bed that I'm looking at under here that face each other, big sort of cottage beds. And then goes into this corner of uh, with a, there's an ornamental cherry in the corner, and then underneath these sort of hedgerows. And I love the idea of cultivating hedgerows in yeah. your garden. And what have you a, got? What's oh, coming gosh, up? I knew you were going to say that. Mm. There's a blackthorn and whitethorn, willow. Um, there is. I'm just looking at now. Holly. Uh, Lovely. Beech. Um, a nice. couple of different types of beach by the look of it and then some undergrowthy sort of stuff as well some grasses and oh, roses a couple of roses in there as well but wild roses yeah um so it was going to be really dense and you know you can manage it and take stuff out and move it depending on what grows and what doesn't and but I just loved the idea of thinking a little differently about you know little areas of your garden if you wanted to create perhaps a little path why not line the path with hedgerow? Yeah. And it doesn't have to be all beach or all 
boxes or something like that. Yeah. It could be different to, to some texture and some different sort of feels about it. You're Books so like that right. are great for that. It's a cracker of a book. And not only does it make you think differently about your plant, your approach to planting, it makes you think differently about your approach to cooking. So a lot sure. of the stuff that you can forage that's leafy, like fat hen, for example, um, which is prolific in the old greenhouse I used to grow in, but you can find it all over the place, um, is exactly like spinach and it behaves in exactly the same way as spinach. So you find yourself as you're weeding the veg patch thinking, I don't have enough spinach for the spinacapita I want to make tonight, going, well, it doesn't matter because I've got plenty of fat hens, so we might right. as well put it to use. So you think differently about, about cooking as well. It's a cracker. The whole series is a cracker. I can't believe we've oh, done lovely. that. That's just, oh, lovely. just hilarious. They're an incredibly well-produced series of, you know, it's informative, it's well broken down. There's some lovely images in there as well. Lovely hardback books. Texturally, they feel good. And they're yeah. all actually sort of quite affordable. All of these ones that I've yeah. got, Fourteen ninety nine. Is that what yours is? Yeah, fourteen ninety nine. Must well. be a kind of price point for the series, but um, a lovely gift as well yeah. for somebody. You know, if you wanted to give someone just a little different way of thinking about something. So the pig no one is good. Yeah, the pig one. I would definitely recommend Piggies. that one for piggies, which well, is about keeping them, but also about cooking with. It's interesting to know how ah. to keep them, even if you aren't going to keep them. Because they've come from the River Cottage series. Yeah, you've mm. got all all of them. Are, there's an element of cooking and food and, you know, enjoying food mm. and edibility. Well, Kathy, from a Hedge of the Episode, it is now time for Veg of the episode. Ooh, that, was, that wasn't your best link, I've got to say. Oh, okay. Uh, I, was, <laughs> I was a little bit proud of it. <laughs> That's what happens with a one cup of tea recording. I've only had the one today. Yeah. Mm. Low on stimulative um, <laughs> input and words as well. <laughs> Clearly, come on then, hit me with Veg of the Week. Yeah, I'm I'm ready. I never know what this is. And I'm slightly no. worried because just before we started recording, <laughs> you said, oh yeah, that's the Veg of the Week, though actually it's not a vegetable. No, I don't. <laughs> uh, what? Wait, what? <laughs> so I'm slightly terrified because to come up with a recipe off, off, my, off the cuff will be a challenge. So well, come this on. This is heavily Let's inverted commenters vegetable of the episode. Okay. Um, mushrooms. Now, they are technically not vegetables, aren't they? Correct. Mushrooms are um, fungi. Mm -hmm. However, I think a lot of people find them in the vegetable department of the supermarket or the farm shop, and I've heard them referred to as a vegetable before hmm. incorrectly. Yeah. Now, I know, because I had this conversation with many people, that my experience of mushrooms is limp lipid mushrooms that my dad used to make. He used to boil the, or fry the heck out of them and put them on toast. Um, or they're this sort of limpy filler um, in, I, I don't know, cooking. As a kid, mm. I used to hate mushrooms, didn't want them in anything. I'd eat them raw, love a nice raw mushroom. Interesting. Um, but just the flippy, flimsy, ugh. Then, Q hour stars aligning and the fate of when I meet the wonderful Kathy Slack at um are we allowed to say where we met or not or should we not say that why we, when, we didn't meet in exotic circumstances I, did I we? Say, that sounds a bit creepy so now like, I said it. I've, I've made it into a thing now you know should we say when you were working at that app? burlesque <laughs> are you like what <laughs> <laughs> when you were at Knives R Us um, <laughs> so when when we went to Dalesford mm. uh, for, to the cookery school and you were there we cooked uh, mushrooms on toast one day and I couldn't mm. believe that we were going to cook mushrooms on toast. I was like, I hate mushrooms, I don't like it. And you transformed the way I think about mushrooms. You know, there was, I think there were like five or six different types of mushroom, gently fried in butter and garlic, I think it was, with a lot of salt and pepper, but not yeah. to the point that they're like lipid. Um, mm. and, and then on a nice, uh, slowly, uh, sort of, um, uh, not slowly, gradually, not gradually, <laughs> that's the same thing, um, lightly <laughs> toasted sourdough with some parsley on top, and it was mm. like a thing of beauty. I loved mm. it. So it did transform the way I think about mushrooms, but I suspect there'll be a lot of our listener thinking, I hate mushrooms, I don't know what to do oh, with them. And I, just I them too love much. mushrooms. If you're into your fitness and nutrition and stuff, and you're also vegetarian, uh, mushrooms are your they are 
packed with protein. They are They're not. really good for you. Oh, my um, God, I had no idea. I know. And I'm quite into protein <gasps> content at the moment. Really? So mushrooms are Googling. really good. So sort of Googling. Are you, are you trying to verify my, are you fact checking I want to know me? exactly how much is what I want. <laughs> how many mushrooms uh, for grams of protein is what I want yeah. to know. Yeah. Um, obviously they're quite light, so you have to cook, but they do reduce a lot when you cook them. So mm. mushrooms on toast is, is a thing of wonder. Wow. A breakfast of poached eggs. Go on, give me the stats then. Now you've so Googled 100 it. grams of uh, mushrooms, mm. of white mushrooms, is just over three grams of protein. Oh, that's not as much as I thought, actually. But then bear in mind that for oh. one portion, I would very happily cook 200 grams of mushrooms. But if you think about, uh, but an egg is three grams of protein, three grams of fat, pretty much. Right. Um, so an egg's sort of a bit, like people rave about eggs being full of protein, but they're not really. I mean, I suppose yeah. it's an easy three grams or whatever, but also they've got basically the same amount of fat in. Um, <clears throat> but pro mushrooms don't have any fat in, will they? Uh, and especially if you're vegan or you're trying to eat more, you're trying to be more plant based, then mm -hmm. they're brilliant for protein source. So um, cooking them as a not on the side kind of a dish yeah. toast on toast is obviously a winner. And the way that works is with quite a lot of butter and quite a lot of garlic, quite yeah. a lot of herbs. Tarragon's a really lovely <gasps> herb as well as the earthiness. Yeah, to go with. Um, yeah to go with mushrooms uh, the other way i love cooking mushrooms as a midweeky type thing is a big mushroom like a portobello type mushroom which you fry but in just a couple of teaspoons of water with a lid on the frying pan so that the oh, whole thing cooks steaming. through almost steaming so fry it on one side for a couple of minutes then flip it over keep the lid on maybe add a bit of water because that's the only way you're going to get the whole thing evenly right. cooked so you cook your mushroom and then and also that helps evaporate some of the water out of it, which I think is part of the problem people have with it. And it doesn't yes. feel very it feels quite meaty once it's been dried out a little bit. Oh. Then you stuff it with some wilted spinach that you've squeezed and chopped up mixed with. I like it with Stilton. Mm. So spinach, Stilton, yes, a few again. breadcrumbs on top, pack mm. that stuffing into your mushroom basin and then pop it under the grill. And it Ooh. is heaven. With cheese? Uh, well, just with the Stilton will just do. Stilton? Yeah, don't, but you mm. probably don't need anything else on top. Oh. Maybe a bit of olive oil on the And a ton of herbs when it comes out over yeah. the chopped herb. Oh, yeah, nasty. it's a lovely quick... Veggie lunch at yours by the sounds of it. Mm, definitely. Uh, can you grow your own mushrooms? It is, it is easy? possible. It? I've never tried it, but I know cheap. people who do. You have to buy. They aren't, but you you can buy a a log that's been already impregnated with the spores. Oh, okay. And then you can cultivate that, and they grow incredibly quickly once they get going. Yeah. Um, and there's a couple of new books out lately called there's one called that's something like the wonderful world of fungi or something like that and it's got these incredible pictures uh of like macro images of yes. mushrooms because they're funny looking things if you pay too much attention to them um so you can grow them but I've never I've never tried it uh it sh this this whole conversation should come with a massive caveat about wild mushrooms right unless you know exactly what you're doing never ever ever eat a wild mushroom I went on a mushroom foraging course once and the chap took us around and said so there's like more than a thousand different types of woodland mushrooms wow. and three percent of them are edible You're like okay no uh, oh gosh so the stats are really stacked against you it's if you really just go stacked against you right. and it's really hard to identify them from a book because right. they look very different depending on their age. Sure. Um, so you can think you're looking at one thing and actually you're looking at something quite deadly so do not do it and actually they are they can make you extremely unwell uh, mm. they can kill you absolutely yeah. because some of them are extremely poisonous and you yeah. have to remember that some you know high concentration poison things that we ingest will kill you outright within yeah. minutes yeah uh, but you know the best case scenario which is still pretty bad is that it will make you incredibly unwell um so <clears throat> yeah, yeah good, good call there so, so it might avoid. be better actually that you 
you know, buy your own and in some way, sorry, buy your own from, you know, farm shop, supermarket, whatever, uh, but, or if you grow your own, there's some way that that area is contained because a bit like yeah. ferns, they, they produce spores, don't they? And so the spores yes, then exactly. grow, which means that you could end up with mushrooms sort of dotted about in your mm. garden a bit. And the mm. danger of that is that you just assume that they've come from the place. So you'd need a way to sort of section off and say, okay, I'm only going to eat mushrooms that grow in this little area exactly here, where i know yeah. i put my mushroom growing kit or whatever yeah, yeah. precisely um, but it but that's a good choice because we're just coming into um mushroom wild mushroom season sort of yeah. very late summer early autumn and that's when and when you've got the wild mushrooms that you can buy from the farmer's market which are something to treasure because they are outrageously expensive but you don't want to do anything with those except the toast garlic yeah. uh butter situation. Let the flavor sing yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. i like that choice okay that wasn't daunting at all that was a really nice one thank you jess that's a pleasure uh, and now <laughs> i'm gonna go off and cook mushrooms all week and love the fact that uh, that can be my new source of protein thank you mm, very much mm, indeed. you're very welcome <laughs> <laughs> um well i said we sort of touched a little bit this week on garden design i suppose mm. a little bit and we touched mm. this week a little bit on you know what what how we would plan our gardens if we did it differently you've obviously yeah. undergone a little garden transformation as well and yeah we've alluded to the fact that we've had different gardens both of us and people at home might have you know varying different bits of space to grow in or not grow in and this week of course we have mushroom uh which you don't need very much space at all to grow mushrooms that's nice um mm. which sort of i suppose is a really nice segue <laughs> You're very good at these. <laughs> <laughs> Into our guest, our special guest of the week, my very good friend, Laura Aikman. Um, I'm really who, excited to hear about her. She sounds like a complete darling. She is a complete darling. She's really, really lovely. And uh, if you don't know Laura's name or you don't recognise Laura's name, you definitely would recognise the face. Uh, she is a jobbing actress on TV and film. Uh, she's been in all sorts of different things, uh, but... I bang on about it it's old now but actually it just had a massive revival this year on Netflix and became one of the top five in Netflix watch things you know people sort of find series don't they and then they recommend them and all of a sudden they become popular again yeah uh, and there was a, a, a two or three part series I think uh, that she was in called The Job Lot which is a comedy written based at a job centre in uh, Brown Hill in Birmingham absolutely hilarious characterization. Uh, she plays the assistant manager and uh, I've known Laura for a very long time. We, in fact, one of my first kids TV uh, presenting jobs was uh, working with Laura on Saturday morning kitchen, uh, Saturday morning TV for the BBC. Uh, so we go back a little while, and it was a joy to speak to her about her London garden and the challenges of living with a husband that doesn't necessarily share her delicacy. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to hear what she says. Let's take a little listen. This is Laura Aikman. I, I'm look. I'm going to be honest. I get all the great guests so far on this. So Kathy is going to be really, really jealous um, that I got to speak to you in a little sound booth today. Well, um, <laughs> so I don't know where to start. I've got uh, some quick fire questions right at the very end, which I'm very excited about because you know nothing about those, but. Tell me about your garden, Laura Aikman. This is what I, this is what I was worried about. It's, it's, <laughs> How would you describe it? How would I describe it? Now, I've looked at the people who've done this podcast before, and it's making me just so terrified. <laughs> I would describe, we've got, so we live in uh, London, in sort of, not central London, but, you know, we've got a flat. Yes. And we've got one of those gardens where we walk past our neighbour's half of the garden. Yep. And then it into our garden oh lovely so loads of potential we're talking like secret garden is it is that what it is, is that the feel you imagine that and then think it's worse though uh, <laughs> but it's quite big when you get down there and it, it does what's good is it does sort of mean that you're sort of quite isolated so if yes you be noisy you could lovely it's mostly where the dog does wheeze and poos and i try and plant flowers and kill them so it's a functional space, is what an estate agent would call it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you've got a lawn and then yeah. a sort of disgusting brick patio, which we've never been bothered to deal with. Right. Uh, and, then, and then beds all around the bottom. And then we, um, 
we got those, you know, those massive railway sleepers. Yes, lovely. Oh, it's sounding yeah. promising now. Yeah, go on. Well, we saw lots of them on Pinterest when we first moved in. And Great. Sort of um, in the sides of the beds, and then if you make them sort of too wide, yeah, it sort of doubles up as a seating area. Yes, and also the edge of your flower bed. So we amazing all of these railway sleepers. This is great to be delivered to the front of the flat. Brilliant. Not realizing that they are about. I mean, they must be weigh about about twenty stone each. It's yeah, they're like a hundred tons each. Yeah, they're yeah. so heavy. Yeah, and we they wouldn't they craned them just into yes. the garden. So then we had to transport them through not only my house, as I have described, but through the neighbour's garden, down into our garden. Right. So me and my, me and Matt did this one day and then couldn't walk for about a week afterwards. So you just... So... did make luxury <laughs> seating. <laughs> when you say you made luxury seating, judging by the description of the garden up until this point, there's just a pile of these in the corner, isn't there? That they've just been left and you just sit on those. Oh, a, we oh. Did, we've, we've made it into a yeah a very functional double sort of bench seating area. This is great. Yeah, this I, now I'm thinking. Yeah, my garden's great. Good. <laughs> it sounds like you've done what you you've, me around quite quickly. You've been hard on yourself. So, so um, uh, who's the gardener? You or the other half? Oh well, if we're honest, it's like I. <laughs> nan and my auntie because when they come round they just sort of look at things that are dying and then help matt tries but like last at the end of last summer he did all the cutting back and he cut back everything so much so that i'm not sure yes. anything will ever come up again um so right he's giving it some effort yes but uh failing most of it. <laughs> and so so here's the thing if, if, so if you're so you're not naturally gardeners is that is that fair to say oh, no. right so, <laughs> and so you inherited by the sound of it that the flat was the thing that oh by the way it comes with a garden you're like oh great let's get a dog sure who doesn't want to have a barbecue yeah right oh i mean not, uh, I don't yeah want to barbecue the dog in case yeah <laughs> i was gonna <laughs> say we should dog, maybe just barbecue and they're separate <laughs> very separate always separate we don't I never look at you and think, well, it's a tasty leg. Um, <clears throat> very good. <laughs> we should just clarify that. Um, so have you got a, like a favourite, like a go-to flower then that is like, or, or the thing that you think, do you know what? I, I, I don't really know what I'm doing, but I know I'll grab a load of those or I know that that's my favourite thing. Have you? Is it like full of daffodils or something? Or There's, there's a lot of roses because I do love roses. But Lovely. the thing I really love because they're just so resilient are hot lips. I don't know what. Yes, is, salvia. Name. Sure. Yeah. Um, the pink and white ones, brilliant. They just grow in abundance, and they look lovely. So they're my favourite by far. And, and, just, and, this, and mint, because mint just spreads everywhere. <laughs> and it looks like weeds, and you think, oh, I must do some weeding, and then you can go, no, it's mint. It's absolutely fine. And if you leave it long enough, it flowers. So it's kind of pretty. Win-win. Oh. Ours hasn't flowered, and we've definitely left it long enough. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and it might be a particular non-flowering variety. Then look yeah. at that—you know more than I do. This is why we need people weeds, like. And I'm just—I'm making <laughs> it <out of> <laughs> making weed tea out of it. Yeah. <laughs> Garnishing people's <laughs> summer desserts when they come around for their barbecue with poison uh, ivy. Yeah. <laughs> so is and is the garden uh, even as the sort of I'm sensing a sort of minimalist, sort of bougie natural i'm trying to use terms that you know <laughs> sensing these sorts of um yeah. is is it a is it a sort of a an escape for you so because obviously you know your job as an actress can be can take you away for longer periods of time and also is quite intense in terms of where you've got to put yourself in a headspace <laughs> my dog <laughs> barking in the background we're going to get to dogs in a second i was like you know what? i'm going to interview now you need to settle down he's like yeah no i can i always do that don't i, I just lay here that's and i'm like yeah yeah that's that's what you're going to do. And he's like, yeah, yeah, no, that's cool. Sure. Uh, and then sort of, Sorry, you know, I'm join in with the interview. Oh. five minutes is like, I don't want to go out now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sitting here. <laughs> um, <laughs> so with work taking you away and you sort of focusing, you know, and you come back and I guess you're quite tired physically and sort of, you know, emotionally tired too. Is the garden a place that you go to? Or is that like, unless the dog needs a wee or a boo or, or I need mint, no. I'm not going. Well, certainly last 
last year with lockdown, the garden was an absolute dream come true. Mm-hmm. Um, it was, well, I just felt so lucky to live where we are and to have that space and sure. to not be cooped up in a flat. I think that did make us appreciate it more. And we love to host people. So it's a big, you know, I love having people round and flogging them in the garden. Uh, and what about inspiration? Like, you know, you said Pinterest for the, um, uh, you know, for your sleepers. Where's the, where'd you get your sort of, you know, sort of inspiration for your garden from? Is it like a, you know, are you a, are you a magazine girl? Are you a gardener's world girl? Are you? Well, no, it's my auntie Maud. She just cut, turns up with, she's not really my auntie. She's just a woman in her 60s R- called Maud. She's oh. my friend. <laughs> I've called her my auntie since I was a child. Um, she, and she'll just sort of, t- she usually turns up with plants or she turns up and scolds me and says, you must buy X, Y, and Z. Yes. Um, so she's really my inspiration. And my nan, who's 91, and is still doing her gardening. She loves a hebe. She's obsessed with a hebe, my nan. Um, and so I often go with my nan to the garden centre as like something that we can do together. And we'll walk around the garden centre and buy flowers that I then kill. But Aww. that's not the point. Yes. Yeah. It's very nice for us to have something that we can do together as well. My dad, my granddad's, um, my granddad's got dementia now, and last year with COVID, it was sure. so difficult for them not to be able to go anywhere. And you could walk around the garden centre outside and yeah. you could hold on to the um, trolley and not fall over. It was just a wonderful place for us to be. <laughs> yeah, no, it sounds it. That's really nice. That's really, really sweet. Listen, um, I would like to know what's on your sort of wish list for your garden, because what's really nice about speaking to sort of normal, you know, non-gardeners, people say, well, I've got a garden, I enjoy it as a space, don't necessarily all the time know what I'm doing, but I, you know, have a go, I'm more than happy and um, and I think it's lovely that you get drawn to that space sort of innately, like naturally. So so often you tend to find that a lot of gardeners that we interview have this, these amazing plans and, you know, great big kind of, you know, designs and stuff. And, and that's all cool. And they know, you know, they know. They're like, you know, this variety, that variety, seven other different varieties, and I'm going to tear them and lasagna bulb them and all this kind of jazz. And I'm like, ooh. Yes, someone wow. told me about the lasagna bulb situation. Beyond. Right? Yeah. yeah. Which is really only good in pots i'm sure you can do it in the ground but it's really great for pots yeah (laughs) because basically if you're you're doing lasagna planting in the ground you're basically digging a grave for a small cat um so i say double up because the effort is big right (laughs) so the rest of the dog the bit of the dog that you didn't barbecue could go in there this is getting macabre so um (laughs) but my question is this um What's on your kind of your wish list? If you've got like, you know, what's next? Have you got have you got a thing that you know, say say money's no limit, right? Let's assume it is is your husband within earshot or not? No, no right, no. great. Let's start designing your garden and spending his money. Um, so because you don't don't spend yours, like make it like a gift or something. This is the great thing for like gardens, right? Because you can because they see this a very clever psychology here, Laura. You you notice how. It's, it's actually beneficial for both of you, right? So he'll kind of go, oh, yeah, well, I use the garden, right? I go, but you ask for it as like a present. So you obviously can't financially invest in it. They have to spend all of it, right? Sure. But, and they'll be like, oh, yeah, and I'll get some of this. It's like a kind of like trick psychology thing, right? So let's assume no budget. Yeah. <laughs> what, what, what's on the, the, the wish list for your garden? Well, just I would get a gardener to do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay yes uh, uh, so that'd be number one the, the dream would be that everything that Matt cut back would grow back and also <laughs> recently when we were allowed to have people in the garden it was so cold when we were out there he just started a fire in the garden right, right. and that burnt quite a lot of things as well <laughs> so just, I would like to undo the damage that Matt has done that would be a dream <laughs> and then I guess the, I would love for it to smell amazing down there. And my friends, I think it's eucalyptus that she's got in her garden. She's got a right. lot of eucalyptus. And it's, if it's that, I mean, it could be anything. Maybe eucalyptus doesn't smell. I have no idea. No, it does. It's lovely. It's eucalyptus. And it smells incredible in there. I would like it to just be more colourful and more smelly. That would be the dream. <laughs> <laughs> All right. More colourful, more smelly, less burnt. Less burnt to the ground and cut okay. back. Yeah. You know, I mean, those aren't really... They're not big things to ask, are they? Sure. I mean, I just want the basics. <laughs> I'm still not convinced that it's going to happen in the No, you're a doggy person, aren't you? Which I love. Oh, yes. yes. 
this is my I love this and so your doggy I thought of fir- at first was a Frenchie but he's not is he he's a bull he's, no, a, he's, um... he's a Frenchie no he is not he is yeah <gasps> He's, he's red. I think that's what throws people off. You don't well, and big, him. too. He's quite big. Do you think he's Yeah, big? I think well, so. I, he's always in the foreground. <laughs> <laughs> I was so sorry to see on Twitter that your, your dog passed away. Was it last year? Yeah, it was almost a year ago. 31st of um, July. Yeah, so big sorry, dog. That's, it's really hard, isn't it? it is, uh, they've become a real... I've had dogs all my life, so... But interestingly, the reason I asked about your dog is because I have lovely Marley. Um, it's probably his last summer this year. Um, so he's in his twilight years. Um, uh, so he gets spoilt, um, which I was thinking, well, you know what? If you want to dig in the garden, dude, I think now's the time. Right? I don't care anymore. Uh, but he's just not a digger. Um, so uh, I had that conversation with him. I gave him permission to do. I said, Let, you know, why don't you come sleep on my bed? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, you can have treats from the table because he's they've never been allowed like to take from the table. Yeah. Uh, so they so can do that. He's like, yeah, cool. I'm up for that. Uh, I said, and look, if you want to, you know, get a little bit excited and silly sometimes, then you know, whatever, fill your boots because this is no, this yeah. is your time to enjoy. Yeah, and um, dig in the garden is cool. I was like, no, no, I don't want to dig. It's cool. So, um, so that was all fine. I took a photograph recently because the ducks had laid some eggs in the garden. Ooh. And uh, within half an hour of taking the photograph, Marley had eaten all of the duck eggs. Um, so, <laughs> so. Do what you want, Matt. Oh. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. It's the end of your, oh, not that. Oh, ooh, ethics. Uh, so, so I love that you've got, um, it, Frank, is that right? Eric. That's it. Frank Eric. Eric Cantona. Yeah. <laughs> Eric, his middle name's Frank, isn't it? That's right. <laughs> sure. Let's run with that so I don't know completely stupid and incompetent as a researcher. Um, so, so Eric, uh, the Frenchie, he loves your garden, presumably. That's like his sort of like space as well. He's big into sunbathing. So uh, he, he loves the garden for a little sunbathe. Um, he loves oh, getting that's warm. super cute. He loves rolling on his back. Yes. Point where I think sometimes people think he's got some kind of condition. <laughs> for an end, but, um, He's not a digger. He does. He's one of those stupid dogs who does a wee or a poo and then goes and sort of flicks ground somewhere completely different to where yeah. he's just been. Yeah, um, yeah, but great. We do have a fox situation. Ooh. Like so much so, we got new fences last summer, and one of them is just completely scratched up for their root into the garden. But I just feel like they're basically dogs without homes, so we can't yeah. sell them off. Yeah, they're lovely. Well, I don't know. They're lovely. They might not be. They might be dicks. But <laughs> as far as I know, <laughs> do um, they roll? Does he roll in the fox's presence? Though is that the problem? Uh, is that the? No. Do you know what? Actually, the foxes are quite polite, and they don't do that much presence in our in our garden. They just hang out. How do you know that you have them? Oh, do you see them? Oh yeah, they come up to the back door, and then Eric goes wild, and I just want to let them in, but. That won't have it. <laughs> yeah, no, that's asking for probably quite a lot of, of scrapping. Yeah, I'm sure that there's sort of like a natural animal kingdom thing where dogs and foxes can't be friends, even though way back when they were brothers from a different mother, right? It's very difficult. It's tricky to navigate. And they're all just out there eating McDonald's, and I feel bad for them. <laughs> <laughs> like wayward gangs. Um, <laughs> all right. So I've got these uh, f- five quick fire questions for you, right? Um, which you're not allowed to prepare for. But before we get to the five quick five questions, um, this is a golden opportunity for you to give us a little sneaky peek, because I am obviously an investigative journalist, um, but I just keep it yeah. very private to myself. Sure. Uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, like proper method acting. <laughs> um, uh, so my, this is an opportunity for you, should you value me, and uh, should you, um, you know, be grateful to the listeners all over the world that are listening in and taking time out of valuable time out of their lives to listen to you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but should you want to offer an exclusive scoop on something that may or may not, let's keep it very loose and non-committal, that be happening? Maybe a film, maybe, oh, I don't know, a goodness. role or something. What can you sort of tease, Laura? Just a little, just put, close your eyes and pretend you're just talking to yourself. That's the way, it's a good way to do it. I can't do it. I have <laughs> one semi-exciting thing, which I'm not allowed to talk about. 
Yeah, a lot of cancelled things. Oh yeah, yeah, a lot yeah, of cancelled stuff. Two plays last year, um, and obviously both of them went down. I mean, the sort of thing that you can't talk about is that like a film not talk about or a TV show not talk about? Is that? Oh, the thing I can't talk. Uh, it's um, I can't talk about it. It's dreadful, <laughs> so I'm just not even going to go there because I'll ruin it. And then no, stop it, you know. <laughs> well, I respect you too much as a friend you to push you. There. I know, right? Yeah. Look how good I am. My, sorry. Matt's just passing me a charger for my computer. Down oh. the trap door. Down the <laughs> you are like you are like a little hobbit, like a little I am, tuck, exactly like a little hobbit. Tucked <laughs> away in the wine cellar. <laughs> I love that we're calling it a wine cellar. So. <laughs> and Eric, actually, my dog. So we had to create the studio in the basement for um, for doing voiceovers over lockdown. And um, Eric, my dog, when I started coming down here to do them, would just sit on top of the crap. <laughs> and sometimes I'll be down here all day doing an audio book. He would just refuse to sort of leave the spot. You just hear him above you, like... Farting, yeah. Oh, fart. Oh, because he's a Frenchie. Yeah, sure. He's a Frenchie. They're full of gas. Yeah. That's why he's big. It's just, it's just gas. Yes, he's been inflated. <laughs> I love that. I miss you. I know it's ridiculous, but then I mean, who's seeing anyone now? Yes, that's true. Yeah, I'll edit in. I miss you too, Jez. Um, so yeah, let's go. Different. No, no, it doesn't matter. No, <laughs> we're done now. So let's do the <laughs> let's do the five <laughs> quick fire questions. Are you ready, Laura Aikman? Right. Possibly off of the silver screen in the very near future, but um, possibly in a book or ear near very nearby um listen to how excited marley is he doesn't do this with any of the other people i interview he's like is that that woman off the telly yes it is um <laughs> he doesn't like the accent i think it is on the job lot that's what it is it, it unnerves him oh yeah the brumming it's yeah it is <laughs> um uh so laura Eggman, are you ready number one flower beds or veg beds flower beds oh okay I'm, Even, and oh. i'm mad about vegetables I sure I but you know you but and also in london you pay like like nine quid for a courgette don't you it's all very expensive down there yeah but i mean you can do a veg box it's not too much okay i'm ruining the point of these quick no 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 it's fine no that was a quick fire return so that's okay uh, dogs or cats dogs uh, all the time see this is great brilliant you've gone straight into our top five golden hall of fame now uh three <laughs> slippers or sandals What do you mean, quick fire? Slippers or sandals? Like, what? pick one. It's 50-50. Like, for indoor the house, right? So you're in the house, slippers or sandals? Wear a slipper or a sandal inside the house. Wear a sock. I'll say a sandal, but I just, I'm imagining a Jesus sandal. I just wouldn't, I wouldn't. Sandals and socks. But there wasn't slippers socks. or sandals and socks or no, socks. I'm just giving a third option, which would just be socks. I mean, I'm just saying, I've done two of these already this morning, and I was already on five, and we were fine. It was clear, all right? So, But, but now... <laughs> This is why I don't send them ahead. Of, right, number four, forget it. Okay. Gardening gloves or muddy hands? Muddy hands. Okay, good, good question. Uh, a good answer, sorry. Very good question, Jess. Well done. Yeah, well done, Jess. <laughs> well done, me. <laughs> number five, would you rather more bees in your garden or more birds? Oh, uh, I think bees. I love bees. Yes, bees are very good. Do you I get many... They uh, have honeybees there, and we can buy it locally. I find it the whole thing very exciting. <laughs> well, that's great. That's a nice thing. You support your local community. You could plant more flowers in your garden, and the bees could pollinate from there. You go and get the honey and go, oh, I contributed to that. Maybe ask for and a I discount. I'm very <laughs> irritated by people who are extremely flappy around bees. Yes. I find it very irritating. Yeah. <laughs> well, quite mean. Uh, have you ever been badly stung by a bee? Well, what do you mean badly stung? I've been stung and not been allergic to it, I suppose. Yeah, uh, just the one, so not like multiple times. Oh, no, I haven't. I mean, I, I watched my girl when I was young, and that looked terrible. Didn't it? I know. Yeah. I had to take a day off school the next day. I was absolutely distraught. Um, <laughs> but, but I've, you know, I've come 360, and uh, now I like bees. You've got every reason to be flappy after watching that when you were young, and yet you haven't. You pulled through. You're an inspiration, is what you are, Laura Aikman. Thank you so much. Like a national inspiration. If there was an MBE for inspirations, you'd be there. Laura 
because she's watched my girl along yeah. with everyone else. And, and didn't flap, though. That's the point. And this is what you're saying is I want more bees, despite the I fact. Do. I mean, I, and I also enjoy a bird, but I like bees. <laughs> I enjoy a bird. What kind of an answer is that? <laughs> We could, I could ask you about all the birds you've got in your garden, but I'm not going. Um, okay, so listen, we have come to the end of our interview. It's as simple as that, 25 minutes. It okay. shoots by. I know when you're having fun, see? It means I'm not allowed to warble anymore. I have to keep them all really short. <laughs> I, should t I should tell you that I managed to um, create a lawn of grass. And that's oh. the only thing I have to be proud of in my garden. Really you created a lawn? Yes, because it was all dead when we moved in, and I... I did it with seeds. I made a lawn. That's well really done. The garden. So I just you grew grass. The end of the podcast. Yeah, and it works. <laughs> it's funnily Maybe enough. Maybe that's why I have a slight aversion to the birds and went for the bees because the birds wanted to eat the seeds. Yeah. Well done you. And what did you do? Like properly, like, like, like rake all of the dead stuff away and yeah. then put topsoil top down and, and... Raking and laying things down. And, and... Yeah, it was through an unemployed time. <laughs> <laughs> How did it make you feel? Um, good. Then um, it... Matt, the destroyer, mowed it too soon and I had to do it again. <laughs> it's amazing I'm still in a relationship with him. <laughs> or that he's not under the grass. <laughs> <laughs> with the lasagna bulbs in the cat. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Just you and Eric going, where's daddy? Whoa. <laughs> Well, Laura Aikman, I don't, we, no, we can't tune in. We don't know when you're going to be. But if somebody's teased enough and they think, well, Look out. hot tip to be on telly slash, I, I don't know, on, in a movie theatre slash telly. in a audio book slash. Oh, many audio books coming your way. That was oh. last year. Many, many audio books. Are there, how many more of the Fifty Shades of Grey series are there? <laughs> Joke. I did a, quite a racy one recently, and um, I, I don't want to do it ever again. <laughs> well, that Jilly Cooper's got a lot to answer for, is all I can say. That is, I can't look at a riding crop in the same way ever again. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, every I just immediately think I've been bad in some way. Um, so, where can people find you, Laura, if they want to know more and they're interested enough to find out what you may or may not be? This is me turning my phone off professionally, just there. Like yeah, well, there's lots of things. Everyone watches Netflix. I'm in a bit of The One, which is a new show on Netflix. You I saw it. Job lot. I'm in seasons two and three of The Job Lot on Netflix and Blue Stone 4 2. I'm in the third season of On Netflix. Um, What's lovely about all of those is there, oh, apart from The One, the other two are quite a few years old now, aren't they? And, then and had a real resurgence. Yeah, which is great, isn't it? It's nice to have a legacy thing like that because the job lot is like just one of my favourite series. I cannot believe it didn't carry on. It's a national yeah. tragedy. Yeah, well, I agree. I mean, it was lovely to be thoroughly employed for a while. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, and uh, Gavin and Stacey did a Christmas special last year. That was very exciting. And of course, I don't know anything about whether they do again so again no problem don't leave a weird silence <laughs> <laughs> but maybe these announcements will come out on your social media will they so where can we find you have you got social that you'd like to plug yes it's at laura aikman but there's only one a in the middle of it just to make so it laura aikman is my in is my instagram laura aikman and uh, laura aikman on twitter <laughs> But have you got two A's on Twitter? Yeah, I've managed it on Twitter. Somehow I didn't quite manage it on Instagram. Right, okay. <laughs> oh, this has turned into quite a long bit, hasn't it? <laughs> it's okay. But you can use the search bar for Laura Aikman and it will tell you, oh, I think you mean that. I think you mean Laura Aikman. I think that's who you mean. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, will you give from me and Kathy and all of our listeners, will you give um, Eric a little cuddle and a little like, like fingertip yeah. scratches in his tummy and a little and a little bonjour? Yeah. OK, sure. And uh, let me know when this is coming out so I can put it on all my socials. Mm, I'll think about it. <laughs> <laughs> OK, if it, yeah, think about whether you want to put it out. It's yes. Just me. <laughs> yeah. Or, or if. I mean, it's a big if at the minute. I'm going to I'm going to be honest. Um, but I'll let you say goodbye to our listeners. We'll see.
Oh, Say right. goodbye, Laura Aikman. Hang on. Yeah, sorry. Um, thanks for having me, Jess. It's really simple. Just say goodbye. <laughs> Laura, say goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. <laughs> what an absolute sweetheart. What I love about her is that she's she's exactly what gardening should be for people yes. in their everyday, yes. everyday life. She's like, she gets pleasure from it. She enjoys it. She finds comfort and interest in it. But you don't have to geek out on it in order to do that. No. It doesn't matter what the name of the plants are. It doesn't matter how much space you've got. It's still a part of her life that bring, brings her pleasure. And in that case, it's doing its job. It's so lovely. I'm really glad we've had a couple of people that we've interviewed in this series who aren't like super uber gardeners. It's yes. really lovely to remember that you don't have to be part of the set and you don't have to be... I spend all your time doing it it yeah. can still bring you joy well I think th there can be a little <clears throat> um because because gardens can look beautiful and I think we all aspire to have something that looks mm. nuts you know I think there are very few people that aspire to have a horrific garden right <laughs> it might be by by no fault of your own that you end up with something like that or you inherit it or it turns out being like that I've got a fly chasing me around in here Kathy have um, you had a shower it's chasing me around it's just <laughs> flying it's doing what it does I'm sat here <laughs> um, <laughs> so what you know we all aspire to have that nice thing but of course what there's a trap isn't there? there's a human trap in our behavior in that we try always to um, get that nice thing and feel that we can't make a mistake or we can't own up to it not looking as lovely as it should do or that our aspiration that we haven't quite achieved just yet so we don't want to show anyone uh, and I love in Laura's case the fact that she doesn't even know what the plant name is that's okay too right <laughs> yes. yellow ones white ones that's fine because you know if you like a white flower you don't know what it is but you like it it doesn't matter that there are a thousand other white flowers that's the one that you like and that's fine yeah um, yeah you know and if you make a mistake dig something up it doesn't look as lovely as perhaps you want it to right now that's okay it's a living okay. thing okay i have like today's and tomorrow i have to say um it was very forgiving of her to not throw her husband out after oh, that episode forgiving I is mean, an understatement right there's grounds for divorce but i mean if anything as i was listening to her i thought crikey you guys should do like a tv show on like the success of marriage or something you know how do you <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? I thought, gosh, it's all credit to both of you that you're still living in the same place, let alone that you're still married. Wow. Wow. Yeah, I know, right? She's really lovely. lovely. What a hoot. Um, and she has a dog. Well, that's what I was about to say. Right. I love her Frenchie. But her Frenchie, um, as I said, looks massive. Like, yeah. He's like a bulldog, but apparently he's not. He's a Frenchie, but he's a big, he's a big Frenchie. I feel like we might have to have uh, a, the dogs, interviewees' dogs line up yes. on our Instagram oh, feed. Oh my word, wouldn't that be cool? We could do like a series three dog party <laughs> with yes. all of, everyone brings their dogs. Like no one's going to be bothered about us. It'll be just be... Oh, because yeah. have you noticed how okay. still we haven't had a cat person <laughs> yeah i know right i know and can i just say i just i know we've said it before i just want to reiterate it's not like we email people and say can we interview you yes oh before we arrange the interview <laughs> do you have a cat yes oh, i'm terribly sorry we're fully booked <laughs> <laughs> can we do that kathy can we create you're the instagram whiz can we create like On a it. guest yeah. I'm on it already there. Already there. <laughs> and you'll be able to find it, ladies and gentlemen, at Roots Wings Podcast. Talking to dogs, how's Hadders? Is he sleeping and snoring he's underneath your feet again? He's a darling. He is doing Always. exactly that, as he is for every episode. Uh, yet snoring slightly, um, foot on my, paw on my foot. It's lovely. Oh, he's, really how's cute. Marley Pops? Yeah, he's really well. Thank you very much. Yay. He's old, obviously, but he's doing really well. We've seen to have the right combination of, of I don't know, a little bit of exercise, a little bit yeah. of drugs. Um, yeah, it's all, it's all sort of good. That's really good. And we were walking around because um, Marley can't be trusted on his own outside. You have to go out with him. <clears throat> right. And what I realised just the other day, I've been doing this for months, and I realised just the other day that this was not a chore. This wasn't, oh, Marlon needs to go out, I need to go out with him. This was, Marlon needs to go out and I get to spend time with my dog in his twilight years and I get to look around the garden. 
So there was this wonderful realization that this practicality of having to go out with the dog. Yeah. I thought, you know what? I don't think even if I in the future have a dog that can be trusted on its own, not to eat things that you shouldn't eat. <laughs> um, I think I'm always going to go out with the dog. Mm. Why be a lazy ass and just open the door and let your dog go out? I think this is a time for me and them to bond and spend time with each other, but also to enjoy outside. Heaven. So, I so yeah. agree. So it's it changed agree. my way I thought about it. Yeah, yeah. It, I went for a run with Hadley the other day and it changed my way I thought about him as well because I was, he's just getting to the age where he's just slowing up a little bit. He's nine. Uh -huh. But we went for a fast, short run, like a 5K run. Okay, gotcha. But I was trying to do it in less, I'm not a super fast runner, but I was trying to do it in less than 25 minutes. Okay which is fast for me. Okay. This and means nothing to me, so well done. <laughs> it's it's not that fast, but it is for me. And I got about halfway and I honestly thought I was going to keel over. And then oh. Hadley, as if on cue, went, hang on a minute, need a dump. Oh. So I had to stop, like Perfect. bang on two and a yes. half kilometres. And he goes, wait, wait up, wait big, up. Yeah. big. <laughs> long slow poo i've never been so grateful in my life and then there was extra time because i had to get the bag out tie the collect the poo tie the bag up oh, just enough time to get my breath back before we took off again so is dogs, running with dog poo grateful. quite difficult uh, well, this it. one was because it was a huge, huge one. Yeah, so all of a sudden it becomes like a fitness workout. Like there's army <laughs> exactly. people with the backpacks. Um, exactly. It did feel a little bit like that. But no, it's it's fine, actually. You're you ready for tough to... mother. Yeah. Um, <laughs> before Sorry, go... that probably wasn't an appropriate story. We should move on. Yes, before we go. I'm going to steer this away from... Yeah, let's steer this away. Uh, Give me your... some tips. Give us some news, Jez, to bring us back to more well, appropriate conversations. I was going to ask you how you felt about wormeries. Interesting. Because I have a compost bin. I got really carried mm. away with compost. So I've got four yeah. big compost bays. Same, uh, yeah. I've got two, but well done. Yeah. They And I bought some tiger worms, mm. quite, quite a few, a big box of them to tip in and let them do their thing nice did they come in the post yes they did so yeah. weird Still i can't know get my but head also quite that. cute like yeah. i quite liked it they seemed must have been ridiculous thing to say they seemed happy what a ridiculous <laughs> thing to say like i don't know whether bloody worms happy or not i don't know they seemed bagged with soil they were alive <laughs> yeah okay good yeah um, so they did their thing and i actually have to say that the compost certainly was loamier and looser and lovelier than it has been in previous years. So they, they did go to town. Okay. And the ant that. is teeming with ants at the minute. There's loads of oh. ants all over. So they're all like, you know, nibbling and doing all their thing as well. So I'm fine okay. with that. That's okay yeah. too. There's probably an ant's nest in there. That's one. Yeah. Um, but I kept one of the old beehives because I was going to convert it into a wormery because I figured all you need is a tray at the bottom and a tap. Yeah. And then a couple of layers. Uh, and some soil and worms and cardboard and stuff and so yeah. I was going to put sort of you know bits of compost in there never got around to it the reason I was going to make one Kathy is because I saw them online did a little bit of research and went you are kidding me that is how much you're charging me for a wormery like they yeah. are insanely expensive and that Bucket. annoys me because yeah. I think it puts people off yeah something actually that's really good so here's my two questions okay three questions oh dear four questions number one okay. <laughs> have you ever had a wormery Number two, why do people keep wormeries? Is it literally just about loamy soil? Number three, what's the juice that comes off of it? Is that a feed? And why can't you get it from somewhere else? Why don't you just have seaweed feed? Number four, is a wormery really worth it? Over to you, Kathy Slack. I don't know. Um, so yes, <laughs> I, I have know. had a wormery before. When Aww. we lived in London in a tiny little shoebox ba box basement flat, there was a space for bins under the pavement opposite. And I had a wormery in there because I was a really frustrated gardener. Intentionally? Or you yes, just had yes. bins that were overflowing? I was one of those people who bought one, oh. thinking this is terribly technical, I should definitely buy one. And it's a, a butt, like a water butt, yes. with a tap in the bottom of it. Yes. The principle being that you fill it with your food waste um, and some sort of starter soil that they give you. I don't know how that's different from normal soil right. and the worms. And then the worms chew everything up yep. and the juice that is 
secreted by the worms and the yes. composting is a really good feed. Poo. Yeah, basically poo. Right. Um, but I mean, it didn't matter that I had like two right, two window boxes to feed and that was it. But I still right. wanted the wormery. It was, it yeah. was appealing. Yeah. Um, and it was back in the day when the council didn't collect food waste yes. and it yeah. annoyed me. Um, but I don't think I was very good at it because it stank to high heaven <clears throat> oh. and it attracted other rodenty pests. Right. And I think, I feel like I had like crazy worms that like <laughs> cannibal worms because there were a lot of worms, like maybe a couple of pints of worms went right. in and then suddenly there were just no worms at all. Like not even the bodies of worms, which given the volume of worms that had gone in, right. I would have expected to see. Did they, they have a just, lid? They'd not got eaten by had a birds. lid. No, oh. and they, it was undercover as well. It was in it's a, like it a was self-contained in a worm yeah. ecosystem. It, was, it wasn't very self-contained. They just, they all oh. died or so ate each other. So wasn't very good. It was great, but I might have been doing it wrong. But I think they're useful for people who don't have a lot of space to compost because that takes up quite a lot of space if you're doing yes, it, it yeah, properly yeah. with a couple of bays like one maturing and one receiving and all that <laughs> kind of stuff but the tap isn't you're not getting soil with a wormery are you like you no, are with the compost you're getting liquid juice. feed yeah right, juice okay. which i think my limited harvest of juice was, might have just been juiced worms <laughs> which doesn't or, sound very appetizing or, or molding food waste that was all yeah. just yeah right. all that which is never good oh, so okay. i don't know i would be really interested to know if anyone's had good experiences with them i suspect we won't be getting a wormery as a sponsor this <laughs> i think that's fairly safe to say there's not yeah. gonna be a worm company saying oh could we please sponsor you um okay. or if there is tell us what we did wrong because it yes. would be really maybe interesting maybe this is a know. golden opportunity to turn us around yes mm. i would like to try it there's something i really like the idea of kathy i agree oh Okay, but... well, I'm going to look a bit more into it. But if you've got a wormery at home, mm. I would very much like to hear your success or not success of wormery. So that maybe over the next seven days, we can come up with some sort of um, wormery solution, an official roots, wings and other things consensus. Are wormeries <laughs> worth it? Yes or no? Our listeners say <gasps> tune in and find out next week. That's an Instagram poll in the making, isn't it? I'll get on to it. it. <laughs> Talking of Instagram, yeah. Kathy, if people want to uh, come see us, on Instagram and joining the fun because there's an awful lot of fun going on over there. Where are they? Yes. Where are they missing out? Where should they we, be? We are at Roots Wings Podcast, and uh, it's all happening. We've got dogs, we've got worms, we've got some gardening as well, <laughs> and we've got merch. We've got merch, haven't yeah. we? Oh, I'm, I'm very, very excited fun. to receive the merch. Tell us all about it. We've got we've got a fashion label, haven't we? We darling? have, we have. We've got t-shirts. If you don't want to carry around an actual peg like I do, then you can have Jez's peg t-shirt, uh, which is, uh, uh, they're all 100% organic cotton. They're beautifully soft and they're thick as well. They're not, they're, they're not that rubbish see-through merch t-shirt you know that some people get it's not that and it's not so so thick that you sweat and it's a really nice lightweight but thick you know it's a good quality and none of it arrives in plastic it all arrives completely in paper it's 100 recyclable as well brilliant um, so i love that so yes you can have jez's peg printed onto your t-shirt we've got a beautiful teacup motif we've got the lovely fork and spade uh, roots wings and other things little cross as well and also i don't want to tease you kathy but there may Ooh. or may not be two <laughs> oh yeah two totes totes like if you like a tote bag oh yeah there's a, an exclusive route i love a tote. tote brilliant i'm very excited to see those does it mean as well that i don't it doesn't matter that i haven't got a peg if i've got a peg t-shirt i think kathy as richard attenborough used to say sorry david attenborough used to say it's entirely up to you darling and you should read into that as you will. So if you don't want to set your own parameters to be one of the team and you want to reduce uh, your sort of boundaries and your, your input, that's absolutely fine if you would rather a simulated peg or if you want to be part of the inner circle and show some effort 
then you can have a real peg. But it is entirely okay. up to you. Okay. Send me a peg. Somebody <laughs> send me a peg. <laughs> Quick before the end of the series. <laughs> Well, I'm going to say goodbye because uh, I need a wee. So uh, I'll see you next week. Bye, Kathy. Bye.